Hello, my name is Tom DuPont. I'm with CodeSmith Tools, and today we're going to be going over CodeSmith's Visual Studio integration. This includes adding CSPs to your Visual Studio projects and the features available through that. Also, how to control build actions when adding files to your Visual Studio projects. And then we're going to briefly touch on CodeSmith's interaction with source control, specifically Microsoft's Visual Source Safe. So this video is going to start off as more of a show and tell and less of a how-to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and copy the Visual Studio sample, the Visual Studio integration sample from the CodeSmith samples folder. I'm going to bring it down into the directory we're going to be working with. I'm going to start by just showing off that particular project because it has a lot of features that we're going to discuss and they're all ready to go. So let's open that in Visual Studio. So the first thing I want to point out is just that, notice you can have CSTs in your project files. They'll just be there with a build action of none, just so they can be easily organized, kept track of, and obviously if you integrate with source control, they can be checked in and out, and you'll always know because you'll see the markings. Now notice that we have CSPs in here, and this is where all the real features come from. Now we'll add one in a moment, so right now let's just look at this one. If we right-click and we go to Manage Outputs, you'll notice it's just the standard CodeSmith Manage Outputs for a CSP. And if we right-click and we look at Output Options here, we have three uh, distinct options. Add Outputs to Projects, Hide Outputs, and Generate on Build. And these all do pretty much what they sound like. Um, add Outputs to Project means that whatever this CSP generates is going to get added into the project file, which is really convenient because you don't have to worry about generating externally and then bringing in, including in the project. They'll just be there and ready to go, especially if you're generating code. Hide Outputs is actually what we're seeing here. You'll notice that behind this is a generated file from this project. Uh, I guess better to show that there are multiple ones behind a single project. And that was done automatically on generation. They were generated, added to the project, and hidden behind the CSP. And then the last one on the list here is generate on build. And this does just like what it sounds. Whenever you go to build your project, this will actually generate the outputs at that time. So let's demonstrate that by deleting these. And notice this project also has generate on build. So when we go over here to build, oh, we have to save our solution. So now when we generate, we have to reload the project, but you'll notice they have been included. And I shouldn't just say included, I should also say they have been generated, they have been included in the project, and they have been hidden behind the CSP, which is all the options we have selected here. So now in order to talk about uh, setting build actions, let's go ahead and add a new CSP. going to create a folder just to keep things organized here. We're going to add an existing item. Now I have gone ahead and created, oop, got to show all files, a master template and three sub templates to go with it, each one having a different build action. So I'm going to go ahead and open those up, add in this project. Now let's right click, come to add and add new item. Now you notice it down at the bottom here, it's going to be a CodeSmith project which is, is whenever you install CodeSmith, it should integrate into Visual Studio. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to call this master. And now that we've added that, notice you can just right click and manage everything you need here. So we can control all the different actions as we were just discussed a moment ago. And if we manage outputs, we can add outputs just like we would with any other CodeSmith project. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the master, because that's all we're going to need. Uh, but let's discuss what that's going to do. So I'm going to go into CodeSmith Studio, and I've already created a folder shortcut here to the folder we're dealing with. So let's open up the master. And if you want uh, detailed information on how to use our master and sub temp master templates and sub templates, we have an entire video on that, so please feel free to watch that. Uh, this is just going to be a brief overview. So we've registered our sub-templates, and we've overridden our render method, and we're going to call one method for each sub-template. So the first thing we're going to create is our string class here. So if we open that up and look at that project, it's just literally going to create us a little class called string class that has a list of characters in it. So 
notice here that when we create our output file, we're going to say we're not going to put any build action in the metadata, which means it's going to default to just including the project, and by default, that's going to set it to compile. So if we look at the create phone book here, we create our phone book template, we add our property to it, and then in our output file, we do a metadata.add, add the build action, and now, in this case, I want this to be an embedded resource, so I'm going to choose uh, index 3. But I want to emphasize that this is different for every version of Visual Studio. Depending on what you have installed, these indexes may be different. So you have to be a little careful about that. So let's just look real quick at our PhoneBook CST. And it's just going to generate a little tiny XML file with some phone numbers in it. And last but not least, we're going to do our create notes here. And if we look at the note template, that's just a couple of lines of text. And again, same process, only this time we add the metadata, we're going to add an action number two. And that's going to add it as a content file. So going back to Visual Studio, let's right click, generate outputs, and see if we got our desired results. Our notes should have been a content, sure enough it is. Our phone book should have been an embedded resource, and it is. And our string class, which we didn't set anything for, should have defaulted to compile. And indeed it does. So if we compile this, build succeeded, everything worked, and everything has been set to their appropriate build actions. So now I want to briefly talk about source control integration, specifically with Visual Source Safe. First I'm going to go ahead and delete these outputs, so we can do an example in a moment. Now I have a source safe box running, or a source safe repository running on this box. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this, this solution straight to the root. So notice that now everything is checked in. This includes our CSTs because they're part of the projects. So everything is in source control and versioned out. And if we go ahead and we generate outputs, they get generated and marked to be updated. And if we generate outputs that don't exist, they get generated and marked to be inserted. But now something kind of cool, if we go and we check in, notice that all the new content is getting added, and although we regenerated the business object, business object outputs, it knows not to check them in because the content is the same. It has diffed them and knows it doesn't need to do that. It'd be redundant. So kind of convenient. And overall, pretty simple and good integration. Now there is one catch, however. We cannot have um, generate on build selected when in source control because the files will be locked, it won't know how to handle unlocking them, and we're going to get an error. So I'll demonstrate here. So if we uncheck that option, and we don't use that for projects that are integrated into, well specifically source safe, uncheck generate on build here and here, then we can build the solution, everything's fine, and we're good to go. And so that pretty much concludes this video. I hope it's readily apparent just how convenient the Visual Studio integration is when using CodeSmith. Because, again, when you're generating files, and a lot of the times you're usually just code, it's going to get integrated right away, it'll be ready to build right away, you can even have it where it's going to re-update itself every time you do do a build. And so this is not only useful for a single developer on their own box, but also when it comes to build automation and integration, having this stuff in your solutions makes it far easier to automate and use. So uh, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to contact us at community.codesmithtools.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you very much for using CodeSmith.